The summer vacation season has yet to start for some folks, but the nation's airlines are already appear to be overwhelmed. Reduced schedules were hit by thousands of disruptions in recent days. Not all of them can be blamed on the weather. Naomi Ruckham has more. After two years of pandemic related restrictions, many Americans are eager to travel. It's unclear, though, if the airline industry can accommodate all of them. I'm extremely frustrated and disappointed. The Juneteenth holiday weekend began with the busiest air travel day of the year. The TSA says nearly two and a half million people passed through its airports Friday. We're talking 10 hours. Unfortunately, the weekend was marred by huge numbers of flight delays and cancellations, more than 19,000 since Thursday. Sad to miss Father's Day with my daughter because I'm, I'm stuck here in the, whole, in the airport. Air carriers blamed the disruptions on several factors including severe weather and staffing shortages. In a statement, Delta said, canceling a flight is always our last resort, and we sincerely apologize to our customers for the inconvenience to their travel plans. We drove five hours already to get here, and now we are delayed and are struggling with this. Despite rising demand with summer approaching, many airlines say they don't have the capacity to add more flights to their schedules. Last week, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg met with airline executives to talk about their company's performance. Buttigieg said he hopes to see some improvements by the 4th of July. Just about 6.30 now on this Monday morning, waking up to some incredibly hot temperatures on this first alert weather day. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Yes, already starting off sweating if you don't have air conditioning because we never really cooled down much last night. And if you do have air conditioning, well, you'll start to sweat the second you walk out the door. We're looking at triple digit heat index values developing as the day goes on and the chance for severe storms too. So two different types of threats on this first alert weather day. So first of all, let's talk about rain chances. We've got a few areas where we've had some showers, even a thunder shower to try to get going this morning. We even had a severe storm earlier around Devil's Lake in that three o'clock hour, uh, but now things are a little bit quieter. We just have to watch out for these spotty areas of rain and thunder. One that just moved through the Fairmount area in southeastern North Dakota, moving into Wilkin County. We see these little individual cells pop up and then they just kind of fall apart again. So that's likely to be the case through the day. Check out our view right now on our, our sky cam at the station just looks hazy. You can see the moisture in the air here and add that to a temperature of 80 degrees and it's already tough out for anybody who's going to be outdoors today. 71 in Grand Forks. Jamestown's at 70. Not so bad there. Fergus Falls checking in at 79 degrees. So let's talk about our forecast for today. If you are going to go out, maybe get some ice cream to cool down. Well, you're going to have to eat it fast. <laughs> We're looking at it becoming a puddle in seconds. It's in that extreme level here today. We're looking at temperatures reaching near 100 degrees. We may not quite get there today, but we're going to get very close in many communities. And this is all ahead of that cold front that's going to move through and bring us a chance for storms coming up for it later into the evening hours for tonight. That's when our severe weather threat will hit. Until then, a lot of us stuck on the warm side of that cold front and that steamy side of the front as well. So let's take a look at our heat index coming up for today. A reminder, this is a combination of your air temperature and the moisture in the air, your dew point here. So the higher each one, the more impact it has on how it feels to be outside and it's tougher for the body to cool down the higher the heat index value. So heading into the noon hour, we're feeling more like we're well into the mid 90s in Fargo and then heading into the afternoon. We're looking at four o'clock, perhaps a heat index value of around 104 at that point in time with an air temperature of 99 degrees. That's going to be rough. Eventually it does improve heading into the late night hours for tonight once that front goes through, but we've got a tough day ahead of us yet again today, so be ready to get into that dangerous category yet again for heat index values, not only in Fargo, but several spots around the valley. More on that and the severe weather to come tonight in just a couple of minutes. So be smart about what we're doing. If you have any outdoor work planned today, maybe best to put that off until a later day this week. If you can, I mean, even tomorrow we'll start to feel that relief. Really, it is today that's going to be the most dangerous day. All right, Lisa, thank you. Fargo police are currently investigating a shots fired incident at the Travel Lodge on 35th Street South in Fargo. It happened just before 11 Saturday night. No injuries have been reported, but they it will be a full investigation into the incident. No information on a suspect has been released at this time either. Stay with Valley News Live as we continue to follow this story. 
One man is in critical condition after losing control and then falling off his motorcycle. He's been identified as Luke Schmitz of Fargo. Schmitz was heading west bound in the 2600 block of 5th Avenue South in Fargo around 1.30 yesterday morning. Schmitz was not wearing his helmet. He was taken to the hospital and remains in critical condition. A 20-year-old man from Illinois died in a Stutzman County crash involving a motorcycle. It happened around 1230 yesterday afternoon, according to officials. That man was on State Highway 20 and was hit by a pickup on the back tire, who then failed. That person had failed to yield. The man was pushed into a ditch and he was declared dead at the scene. Yesterday was a hot one. Today will be as well. And while some were battling the heat with their air conditioners, hundreds of people weren't able to use them because of power outages. Just over a total of 2,000 Cass County Electric customers experienced short power outages. A total of three of them happened over the day. Officials say the two of the three happened because of an overload. Crews were sent out and worked as quickly and safely as possible to restore that power to everyone. School might be out, but a heads up for parents when it's back in session. The federal waiver that made school breakfast and lunch free to all students, regardless of their family's income, is set to expire on June 30th. Free school meal programs started in March 2020, with some of the waivers expanding into summer food programs. About 21 million students accessed free or reduced price lunch daily prior to the pandemic. Waivers helped to ease the application process and allowed every student access to the free meals. Starting today, COVID-19 vaccines can start to go into the arms of children under five. The CDC's advisory committee voted to authorize Moderna's two-dose vaccine series. Earlier in the week, Moderna's vaccine series for young children got emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration. Ten vaccine centers are already set up in New York City to provide more options for children to get immunized against COVID-19. Each dose of Moderna's vaccine for younger children is only a fourth of what an adult would get. Vacationers will get pictures with all kinds of roadside attractions this summer. In Faribault County, Minnesota, one attraction has tourists seen green. John Lordson shows us how a green statue ended up in the city of Blue Earth. June in southern Minnesota means plenty of green. That includes growing crops and a fully grown giant. His smile is 48 inches, so that's four feet. And um, supposedly he weighs 8,000 pounds. And he wears a size 78 shoe. Ho, ho, ho. Jolly Green Giant was once a major canning company in Blue Earth. But the statue is here because of radio station owner Paul Hedberg. In the 70s, Hedberg realized that Interstate 90 construction meant less traffic for the city. He got to thinking, okay, we need something to bring people to town. So he came up with the idea of a green giant statue. As the legend goes, in a single morning, Hedberg raised close to $60,000 to build a 60-foot fiberglass statue. And for the past 43 years, the giant has cast a shadow over the town in a good way, standing tall through wind, rain, sleet, and snow, all while wearing just a toga. The leaf toga, is that something you'll see well, people that, wear around town? No. Okay. <laughs> At one time, he even had a, a leather vest and a bandana for Sturgis. But on this day, it was sports cars, not motorcycles, that made a pit stop. This is something I've done for the last five years. Every year, the High Plains Corvette Caravan drives from Colorado and Wyoming to Wisconsin Dells. Even though they drive Corvettes, they're not too cool for the Jolly Green Giant. The Jolly Green Giant is a major stop along the way. You would never wear a Leaf toga? I can't do that anymore. It'd be tough to pull that off while you're driving a Corvette, I think. Well, it gets in the way. Gene and Karen Mays of Loveland, Colorado are seeing the giant for the first time. I think it's, it's neat. It's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Huge. He's maintained his physique pretty well over the years. I probably eat a lot of green beans. The giant's history is told just feet from the statue inside a relatively new museum. Kind of a medieval looking contraption here, but this is what they used in the 1950s. Right, the filled cans would come into this machine and then they would get lidded. A diorama highlights the canning plant in Blue Earth and green giant memorabilia of all kinds can be found from wall to wall. Each year the collection grows like a corn stock, all thanks to the jolly green fellow who towers over the countryside. And you talk to anybody who has any family or friends coming from out of town, they always bring them out to see the giant because that's what you do. <laughs> In Blue Earth, John Lordson, 
WCCO 4 News. Land of 10,000 lakes and 10,000 attractions. It was a weekend to pay tribute to all of our fathers and father figures in our lives. Father's Day wasn't really even an official holiday. Well, it's not a federal holiday, but you know what I mean. Until 1970, President Richard Nixon had Congress pass a resolution designating the third Sunday in June as Father's Day. Fathers are always happy to be remembered, whether it's with a card or maybe even pancakes in bed or a gift. However, it's the thought that counts no matter what you thought for your father. We are waking up to some incredibly hot temps and that could mean possible storms this morning throughout the day and this evening. Lisa Green is tracking the very latest on this first alert weather day.